Hello, and welcome to the Designing on Particle series, where we walk through best practices and recommendations as you're building your particle-based products. My name is Eric Fosnacht, a solutions architect here at Particle, and in this video, we are gonna delve into the world of Particle's IoT modules, specifically focusing on firmware development using Particle's Workbench. So today, we will discuss what is the Particle Workbench and how to get started. We will review what is device OS and along with how to configure your device. We will also discuss the basics of firmware development, specifically focusing on the particle primitives. And finally, we will learn how to leverage libraries. So let's dive right in. The first thing you'll need is the particle workbench. It's our powerful VS Code extension for developing and debugging firmware. If you haven't installed it yet, just go to our website and follow the instructions there. Our Workbench provides all the tools, libraries, and extensions you need for IoT development in a single, easy to install package. Workbench gives you a managed toolchain and CLI to directly manipulate the connected particle device. Note that some of you may be familiar with our web IDE, our other development environment. However, this is really only intended for users to get up and running quickly, blink an LED, and there's no reason you should be using it for actual development. So now that you have our extension installed and it is running in VS Code, you can now click on our extension. Then the best way to get started using Workbench is to refer to the development workflow noted on the welcome screen. To start, make sure you are logged into your Particle account as you will be configuring devices associated with your account or a device you have access to. Then you will want to create a project. Alternatively, you can load an existing project and all the relevant configuration should load automatically. Now that you have a project created or loaded, the next step is to select the device OS version. But what is device OS? Device OS is where the magic happens, and it is our lightweight operating system for our embedded IoT modules and gateways. Our Device OS is open source, based on free RTOS, and provides a stable API for particle hardware and cloud communication. It handles all the complexity of maintaining a stable connection to the cloud and ensures the hardware is running smoothly. So now that you know a little more about Device OS, Let's get back to Workbench to learn more. So now that we have a project created, the next step is to configure your device. It will then provide a list of device OS versions in numerical order. But how do you know which version to select? Do you just select the highest number? Well, sort of. It depends on whether you need a certain feature or maybe you need a long-term support version. For device OS versions starting with an odd number, these are what we call the development versions of device OS, and these versions always have the latest and greatest features. Note that just because these are considered development doesn't mean you shouldn't use them. You may have to if you require a certain feature until it is then ported over into a long-term support or LTS version. Well, what about LTS versions? For device OS starting with an even number, these are our LTS versions, and these will be supported for several years as outlined in our product lifecycle document. These versions are intended for applications that are going into or are in production, or if you would just prefer using a more stable version of device OS. But how do you know what features and bug fixes each version has? For all relevant information about each device OS version, the best place is to visit Particle's releases document. This allows you to see the exact changes between the different versions without having to manually go through the change log. Now, before we move on, let's quickly summarize device OS. All versions starting with an even number is the long-term support or LTS branch. These versions are more stable and should be used for production or existing products. 
all versions starting with an odd number is the development branch. These versions include all the latest features and should be used for net new projects. And remember to visit the releases node stocks for all relevant changes. Next, it's time to configure your device. So now that we understand more about the various device OS versions, we will select the latest development branch, 5.5.0, for the purposes of this video. Once a version is selected, you will need to select the target platform. For this video, we will select BSOM. Next, you'll want to enter the name for the device. Note that the name is used for Cloud Flash and other related features. Once entered, the toolchain will either download to your computer, if not already, and the project will now be set up. Note that you can always change the device OS version and target platform by navigating to the .ino file. And at the bottom of the screen, you can select the platform and change the target platform. Or the device OS version. It's that simple. And you can start writing your application firmware using our device OS API and other relevant C++ and C functions. You have your setup loop that will run once when the application is started and the loop function that will run continuously as you would with a fresh Arduino project. Now, one particle platform that is slightly different is our asset tracker based products. Writing firmware for these products, Tracker1, Monitor1 and Tracker SOM is different and can be made simpler by using Particle Edge. Asset Tracker products come preloaded with Particle Edge, formerly known as Tracker Edge and Monitor Edge. Now, this topic deserves its own conversation, but the key takeaways are development is slightly different, but just as easy. You can configure your firmware by using our cloud based configuration engine and there's a ton of supporting documentation found on our documents page, docs.particle.io. Now, one key item you need to be aware of when developing firmware is our built-in primitives. These are used to transmit data to and from the cloud with a single line of code. These include publish, subscribe, function, and variable. Now, let's take a look at each primitive. The first primitive is our particle.publish that is secure, reliable, and scalable. We abstract away all complexities behind the secure bidirectional communication. This primitive works seamlessly with our platform, giving users all the built-in functionality they have come to expect when selecting particle. The next primitive is our subscribe function, and as the name states, it is used to subscribe to events. You could think of this as a way for devices to talk to each other. An example is one device could publish events when a motion sensor is triggered, and another could subscribe to these events and respond by sounding an alarm. The pub-sub architecture is powerful, allowing devices to communicate with each other through the particle cloud. The next primitive is the particle function which allows code on the device to be run when requested from the cloud API. This is a cloud to edge transaction that is typically used if you want to control something on your device, say an LCD display, a buzzer, or control features in your firmware from the cloud. The last particle primitive is the particle variable. This primitive is useful when you have a data field that needs to be retrieved from the cloud in the future typically passing a global variable. You can change the value of the underlying global variable as often as you want. The value is only retrieved when requested. Our primitives have benefits compared to other types of transmission layers, including minimized raw data usage, built-in keep alive, and stateless, meaning our system can easily load balance, ensuring the best user experience. Another reason to use these primitives is that all of them have built-in security using TLS and DTLS encryption, ensuring the data is secure. I want to highlight that there are other methods of performing edge-to-cloud transactions like MQTT or UDP over HTTP, 
but those methods aren't officially supported and come with their own downsides like rolling your own security, to name one. In addition, I want to highlight an item that you should be aware of. And this is that we have a JSON library built into DeviceOS. This allows for placing multiple pieces of data in a single publish, subscribe, or function call, and it includes a JSON generator and writer. Use this to minimize data operations and ensure better performance and efficiency. Now, before we move on, let's quickly summarize these primitives. The publish function is used to transmit data from the edge to the cloud. Subscribe allows various devices to communicate with each other. Function is a cloud to edge transaction and the variable, which can be used to retrieve data fields at a later time. Next, let's review how to install libraries. So as you are developing, what if you want to leverage a library? Well, since you're using Workbench, it's easy. Click on Install Library under Code and type in the name of the library. It's that simple, and all the dependencies will be added to your project automatically. Now, how do you know the name of the libraries, or how do you search? To search for libraries, we have a doc that lists all the officially supported and community libraries. Use the name of the library and add it in Workbench. Alternatively, for newer community libraries and other Arduino, SparkFun, Quick, and MicroEClick, to name a few, you can pull in those libraries using the folder structure shown on the screen. Now, this isn't as easy, but it's still supported, and the procedure can be found in our docs. That way, you can leverage many open source libraries used across the developer community. Now, Let's quickly recap a couple of key takeaways from today. Never use the web IDE for development. You should always be using the particle workbench. Leverage all the built-in DeviceOS APIs when writing your firmware. This not only minimizes your development, but it also allows you to move from one platform to another. Use our primitives to transmit data from the edge to the cloud and vice versa with one line of code. And use official, community, and other common libraries when writing your firmware. And always refer to our documentation for more information. That's it. We've covered a lot of ground today. Remember, the best way to learn is by doing. So roll up your sleeves and start building your IoT applications with Particle. Thanks for watching.